This may be the best wedge for just about everyone. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here, and in my hand here, I have a wedge. I love wedgies <laughs> and wedges because, you know, the short game is really the part of the golf game where everyone has a chance of being an equalizer, right? You know, some people just aren't going to drive as far or hit long irons far, but a lot of us have the capability with a little bit of tech and a little bit of training to be great short gamers. So I am really excited about trying this out. This is the Edison 2.0. 5X Forge wedges, it says it right there, 5X Forge 2.0. And I've actually been really interested in trying these out for a long time. So I actually got the three set here because I was usually always get a set of three wedges and usually from the same brand. But before I get into what makes these wedges pretty interesting, I wanna show you this wedge. This is the wedge that I game and this is a 54 here. This is a JP Premier wedge. I really love it. They are brutally expensive, but it's one of those things where, you know, I wanted to improve my short game. Now, the funny thing about this is I think I went to PluggedInGolf.com and read a review on these because I did a bunch of research before pulling the trigger and spending my money on these wedges. And so I have loved these. I've played them for about a season and a half and they've been really good to me. But in that Plugged In Golf review, he raved about them, said it was great, loved everything about them. And then I got to the comments and I read one of the comments that said, wow, you seem to really like the wedge. Did they replace your Edison wedges? And the author wrote, no, still play them. So the funny thing to me is he didn't mention the Edison wedges at all in the review, but in the comments, he admitted that he uses Edison wedges and apparently loves them. And so that got me thinking, man, how good are those Edison wedges, right? Because this is supposed to be one of the best wedges ever conceived and manufactured. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I really love it. So I've always been intrigued by Edison wedges ever since I read that. And so today I'm very excited to be trying these out because they are not that expensive. I mean, they're not giveaway prices. They're not like or Lamar's or kind of a cheaper brand or anything like that. In fact, I'd say they're maybe priced around Cleveland wedges, which are obviously very good, but I think really good price or even the Wilson staff wedges, which I think are also really good value. But this has some really interesting things about it. One, the way you get fitted for them, and two, the technology of them. So first of all, if you go to the website, they actually have a questionnaire that you can fill out and then it will basically tell you what wedges you should be in. And so I filled that out and what I will tell you is that I play my wedges more upright because I play a single plane swing and I'm a shorter guy and I have longer arms and so my hand to floor distance is pretty short and so I I actually play all my wedges like four degrees upright and so that came out in the fitting notes and I went ahead and submitted it and put in the order and it was funny because then the next day I got an email from Edison wedges and they said in the email hey just wanted to make sure that these uh, specs that you sent in are right because they're not really very normal or very common and I said wow thanks for checking they aren't normal they aren't common and they are correct and so I like that someone saw that it didn't just kind of put them into the assembly line and double checked on that. And in fact, for me, finding wedges that can be adjusted that much because of the materials and the alloys and the different metals that they use is not always easy. So some wedges, kind of like the Cobra Aerojet wedges can only be adjusted, I think one or two degrees. So if you need something three or four degrees, then I think these are going to be contenders, but a lot of wedge companies won't even adjust that far. The other thing I want to say here is that the tech on these is supposed to be amazing. Now I haven't hit these yet and one of the things that didn't make a lot of sense to me when I first heard about it, but as I think about it, it makes a lot of sense, is that the center of gravity here is moved up. And what I will show you is that we actually have a fairly thick top line here and it just feels kind of heavy. You can see how it kind of bows out a little bit there. It's very subtle. And then this kind of cuts back in here. And so we actually have quite a bit of metal right up here on the top. And I think that moves the CG a little higher, but puts the weight up here. And you might be saying, well, Pete, that's the opposite of what you do. You want that CG super low, get that ball flight up. And that's kind of what I thought. And in fact, most irons do that. They try to move the CG as low as possible. They weight it as far back as possible to get that ball flight up. So a lot of clubs, kind of like my Cobra LTDXs, have more loft on them, but get the same launch that older clubs do because of where that CG is. Now, it makes sense to me because they explained that moving the CG up, moving the weight up here, lowers the ball flight. So what that does here is it launches the ball a little lower and actually makes the distance a little bit more consistent 
for us amateur golfers. And that's important because sometimes if you get high flying balls with a lot of spin, you can get all sorts of weird things happening. If there's just a little bit of wind, sometimes they can just kind of travel straight up. And what you might get is a 48 yard shot or a 59 yard shot with the same motion, the same swing, but just because the CGs are very low and the spin rates are so high, it can be hard to control that. So distance is what Edison says is more important for the amateur golfers out of their wedges. And so that made a lot of sense to me. And I can tell you, I mean, I play a 60 degree wedge is my most lofted wedge. And if I open that thing up and just swing at it, it will not go very far. I mean, it'll sit very quickly, kind of like a good dog, but it's not gonna fly. And so it really becomes just a club that I use around the green to work shots when I don't have a lot of green to work with. But my other wedges, I do want them to be very consistent. I want them to gap just like the rest of the clubs in my bag. And so these might actually do it. So before I hit these, I wanna show you what these look like up close and personal while they are still brand new and pristine. All right, so here's the club. Like I said, I've got them in some different lofts, but I wanted to grab a fairly lofted one here. This is the 57 degree here, and just wanted to show it to you up close. First of all, let's start down here. Lampkin Grips. I believe Mr. Lampkin is a member of the San Diego Country Club golf club that I have played at when I was a kid and really love, and the grips are just fantastic. You can see that they put KBS shafts in here, the venerable shafts, super nice. And what's also nice is if I kind of go toe up here, uh, they make sure that the graphics pieces down so that's not distracting but they also have a bunch of shafts listed but they've also said that they will put in basically anything that you want got the ferrule here nice little gold band on there that's not very typical a lot of these are monochromatic fairly large hosel here you can see that it says i think it's mr kohler kohler design you know right there on the hosel and then right down here what we have is the wedge head and it's kind of a traditional wedge this kind of reminds me of wedges when i was growing up you know a little bit simpler cleaner look and like i said on this one too you can just see See, might be a little hard to see there, but it's just raised up here. This kind of bead blasted area kind of slips down. So that's how I think that they raise that CG, how they put weight and mass up high. And if I'm right, you know, this edge that goes all the way around is higher. So I think this should be actually fairly forgiving too, because the weight is probably around the perimeter as much as possible. 5X forged, I don't know what that means, just forging them five times, which is kind of interesting. You can see the sole isn't super deep here, but we do have a fair amount of bounce. And what you might not be able to see here is we actually have kind of this leading edge, and then we have a little crown edge there, and then it starts tapering back here a little bit quicker. So you do actually have quite a bit of leading edge bounce, which should help you kind of keep that from burying it into the ground. You can see we have kind of this bead blasted gray finish here. It looks like we have some micro engravings there. So maybe that helps with oleophobicness, getting rid of the water on the face. We also have some grooves up here. You can kind of see my fingerprints on there, which is unfortunate, but we have some grooves over here too. So it's actually not like a polished area that typically tends to be just flat and polished. So that should give you a little grip too, if you're opening this club up. But what I love about this is, you know, the idea here that it's not just another club and trying to hit a price point, but they have kind of gone the other way on the technology here. And that actually might be a really smart way of rethinking wedges for most of us. So I'm really curious to see what I can get out of this and less about the distance and just more about, is this going to be consistent on distance as opposed to some of my other wedges, which tend to be maybe a little less consistent. So let's try it out against my gamers and see how this does. All right. So many rounds later after playing with these edison wedges i wanted to give them a real chance not only in the simulator but on the golf course so first of all let me talk about what i experienced with these in the simulator again big kind of a fat piece up here center of gravity moved up supposed to launch the ball farther and i will tell you what these wedges are much farther than my existing wedges. And it kind of was pretty striking. In fact, I will tell you that my 60 degree wedge, which is a JP Premier golf wedge, which actually has a center of gravity raised as well. So it's a much higher center of gravity. So it should also fly a little bit farther. I have just in my mind said that my 60 degree wedge goes about 60 yards. It's actually pretty easy for me to remember. So if I'm about 60 yards out and I want to take a three quarter swing on my wedges, which is basically what I do. I don't really take full swings on any of my wedges that it's pretty good for 60 maybe 65 yards on its best days but it's just been really consistent for me for that but the 57 degree edison wedge 
was nowhere near that. In fact, it was averaging 76 yards per shot. And that is, again, the same type of swing. That's kind of that three-quarter swing that I use on my wedges. And 57 degrees is a little stronger than 60 degrees, but only by about three degrees. I would not have expected that. In fact, it goes farther than my JP Premier 54-degree wedge. So it's three degrees weaker than that wedge and five or six yards longer than that wedge. So I'm glad I picked up the set here with the 47 degree, 51 and 57 degree because this set gaps very well. And it was just remarkably consistent, putting balls out there, 74 yards, 75 yards, 76 yards with a wedge that has quite a bit of loft. And you might be saying, well, Pete, they're pretty long. Maybe they're not spinning as much. Maybe you can't stop them on the green. Well, the reality was on the short chips where I was just using like a putting stroke or square to square shot, you know, not a lot of wrist action. Dude, I wouldn't have expected those balls to just sit to get a lot of spin on those. But man, they were so easy to control and drop on the green and sit. They had a little bit of roll out, but maybe five, six feet. And man, I just had some awesome chips with this. The other thing that I was gonna say is the feel with these are incredible. Now it says here, 5X forged. I actually don't know what that means. Maybe they stamp these things five times, just really compress that metal, something like that. But these clubs have maybe the best feel of any wedge I have ever used. And you kind of expect that in forged clubs. But when I put this club down behind the ball, I just felt like it was an extension of my hand. Like my arm was going all the way through the shaft and my hand was cupping the wedge head. And I felt like I was almost just smacking the ball with my hand because I could just make shots that normally I have to think about with my other wedges. So for example, I had actually shot over the green. It rolled down to the backside of the green and kind of settled in a little flat area so I had to chip from behind the green back onto the green and the problem here is there's a little knoll there's a little rise to the green and the green was sloped away from me facing the fairway and the other problem is I had a tree over me so I couldn't actually shoot a wedge up and flop it onto the green which is what I would really have to do what I needed to do was just have a feel scramble shot take a wedge and try to chip it into the incline of the grassy knoll between me and the green and try to bleed off some speed and then have it bounce again onto the green and settle anywhere on the green. That would have been a great shot. And I pulled out the Edison wedge and from the moment that I had it in my hand, I felt like I could just visualize and feel that shot. Even though I hadn't been playing with these very long, right? I just got them this season. There was just no doubt in my mind that the wedge gave me enough feel that I was going to be able to pull off that shot and doggone it, I was able to bounce it exactly where I had visualized. It bounced up onto the green, settled about three feet away from the hole. So that's pretty amazing. Lastly, on the bump and runs, and I think because of the feel here, these things were so easy to hit. And maybe with the weight really high, maybe that center of gravity is raised up a little bit. Maybe these are more forgiving, especially because it looks like there's a lot of weight around the perimeter. On the more standard chip shots off the green, the kind of bump and run shots, dude, they were super close. In fact, the very first chip shot that I took with this, I lipped out of the hole. So that was pretty amazing. And I would say that the chip shots with this out of the rough, around the green, were fantastic. So much feel. If you are a feel player, these are the wedges for you. They just transmit so much energy. It's like sports cars that don't have power steering. You're just feeling the road. I feel like when you swing these, you can feel the dimples in the golf ball. They look pretty smart. They don't scream, look at me. They don't have some of the little portholes like some of the other wedges. But I think for the amateur golfer, this is going to improve, one, your distance consistency. It's probably gonna give you some more distance on top of that. But man, I think you're gonna see a lot of improvement around the green with these wedges. These these are fantastic and they are remarkably affordable. If you do the online fitting, they will build the wedges to your specs so you can get custom clubs delivered right to you. And because I kind of have this weird single plane swing with an up down stance, they were still able to bend these for me in a way that they are perfect. So obviously the materials or the alloy they're using allows for that customization. And 
They are remarkably affordable. They are cheaper than a lot of the standard wedges out there. So if you're looking at something like a Cleveland or a Wilson wedge, honestly, these are, I think, even a better value. They are every bit as good as any premium wedge I've ever used, including the Callaway PM Grind, which I used for a long time, or the Jaws. And right now, this season, I have been gaming them because they have really stepped up my game. So if you are looking for distance, consistency, and crazy amounts of feel around the green, I think you're going to love these Edison wedges. I will put a link to them in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can more and explore so much deeper.